Hi, Grandma here reading David Knight, uh, chapter 32. In chapter 31, Davis had an art lesson and Mr. Hillinger has indicated that Davis is a gifted artist. A gift, I didn't just like to draw. I didn't just have the beginning of an eye, I had a gift. I watched him go down the path to the gate. He had a funny walk. His right shoulder was higher than his left, possibly because of all the stuff he was carrying. I tried to memorize the way he looked from behind. When I got back to the classroom, I wanted to draw it. I couldn't wait for Thursday. I couldn't wait for every Thursday. Wait for every Thursday. But I wouldn't be here every Thursday, not after I got the carving back. I'd miss out on that special class. I stopped walking. Didn't I want to get out of here as soon as I could? Sure I did. But I also wanted to be in that class and I wanted to go on being with my buddies, but I'd sworn to get the carving and leave. I couldn't do both, stay and leave. I hated it here. Well, I hated the HHB. My buddies and Mr. Hillinger weren't the HHB and I didn't hate them. I liked them a lot, a whole lot. I started walking again. I had to figure it out. Back in class, Mike was drawing violins. Mr. Cluck was babbling. I tried to draw Mr. Hillinger walking away from me. You'd think it would be easy to show he was going the other way, but it kept looking like he was coming toward me. You'd think I could get it right since I had a gift. The bell rang for morning recess, time to get ready for Mo. In the courtyard, Eli explained my idea to all the Elevens. Harvey said he thought it over and it would never work. Nobody listened to him and we started rehearsing, all of us except Danny and Lewis, who would be watching Mr. Doom's office during lunch. I concentrated on the rehearsal, but every so often I remember what Mr. Hillinger had said about my having a gift. Then I'd be back in the middle of the rehearsal again. There were a few tricky moments in the plan and it might not work, and it might get Mo mad at us, which would make everything worse. But if it succeeded, we'd get to eat our entire lousy meals from now on. What about the eights, nines, and tens? Mike asked. Can't we help them? Well, they'll have to think of their own plan, Harvey said. I usually sat next to Mike at lunch, but today Eli was on my right and Mike was across the table next to Jeff. I didn't want Mike too near me because Mo was going to pick on somebody and I didn't want it to be him. Eli and I sat close together, hoping our buddies would sit on the other side of each of us. If one of them sat between us, we'd have to wait till supper to try again. Mo came in and sat on my left, and Eli's bully sat on Eli's right. So far, so good. Mo kissed his rabbit's foot and picked up his fork. A lady began dishing out the food at our table. She served Mo. He took a bite. She served me. His fork headed my way. Wait! He hesitated for a second. It was enough. I passed my plate to Eli. Eli's bully was eating Eli's food. All the Elevens were watching Eli and Mo and me, but they were eating at the same time. Eli spread his hands over my plate and started humming. I don't know how he did it, but the hum had an echo. It sounded round and full. He closed his eyes and swayed. The hum rose and fell. He wasn't a bad Ghanif. He was doing fine. He stopped humming and nodded his head three times. Thank you, O oh phantoms of the just. When he said phantoms, he hummed the M, so it sounded like phantoms. He returned the plate to me. Now you can eat, I said to Mo. I folded my hands in my lap. It's all yours. Mo stuck his fork in, lifted it. I held my breath. It was all over if he ate. He stopped an inch from his lips. What's wrong with it? The wizard said I shouldn't eat it. He said it's for you. Mo put his fork down, reached around me, grabbed Eli's shoulder. What? Eli didn't even look scared. He waved a hand in front of Mo and started humming again. Mo let go. Stop that, Eli kept humming. Mike's bully reached across the table and started to take my food. 
Mo grabbed the edge of the plate. Watch yourself. The other bully let go. I thought you didn't want it. You thought wrong. Mo looked over at Eli, who had stopped humming and was sitting with his head down, swaying. Mo looked around at all of us elevens. Mike moved and caught Mo's eye. You, I mean you. He pushed my plate toward Mike, lifted the fork, loaded with my food. Hungry? We were in trouble. Mike shook his head. No, thank you. Eat it, he handed Mike the fork. Don't eat it, I yelled. Don't, Eli said. The phantoms will be angry. Eat, Mo told, stood up, eat. Mike put the food in his mouth, which was what he was supposed to do if this happened. Then he was supposed to fall backwards off the bench and lie still. And when we rehearsed, he couldn't lie still. Nobody in a million years would have believed he'd fainted. Mike chewed once and swallowed. He smarted, started to smile, but the smile froze, and he pointed wildly at his throat. His eyeballs rolled back so only the white showed. Then he fell backwards, but he didn't lie still. His hands clawed the air. He rolled from side to side and made choking noises. Oh my gosh, he was the best Ghanaf of all. I looked at Mo. He was clutching his rabbit's foot with both hands. Boys from nearby tables were gathering around Mike, and then I saw Mike's bully laugh, not believing any of it. The fork was headed for my plate. If he ate, Mo would know we had tricked him and he'd murder us. Jeff also must have seen the bully go for my plate. He leaned on the table to see Mike better. When he put his hand on the table, he knocked his water glass into my plate, sending them both flying. The glass broke, the food slid over the floor, and Mike's bully looked very disappointed. Mr. Meltzer pushed through the ring of boys around Mike. He picked Mike up, carried him to the nearest stairway, probably on the way to the infirmary. I wondered what Mike would do when the nurse examined him. A serving lady started cleaning up the broken glass and spilled food. Mike leaned away from Eli with both hands. Eli traced Mo's outline in the air. He started humming again. Don't, Mo yelled. Stop. Eli went on shaping the air around Mo. His humming got louder and deeper. Stop it! Hmm, he will change his ways. He put a hum into the end too, so it sounded like change. He will change or bad luck will follow him everywhere. Hum, nothing will go right for him ever again. Now will he obey me? What, how? Feed me, Mo looked confused. We had all finished eating. There's no food. You have taken the food of others. The phantoms are angry. I didn't, you saw I didn't eat it. Before this meal, the phantoms want revenge. Oh, no, they don't. They couldn't, Mo's voice cracked. I'm sorry, I didn't know. These are the phantoms' wishes, Eli paused. What? What wishes? You will take no more food from any eleven. When we are twelve, you will still take no food from us. You will forbid anyone to take food from us. These are the wishes of the phantoms. Do you hear and will you obey? Tell them not to be mad. Uh, I hear and I will obey. It was torture not to laugh. I looked down at the floor. If I looked at any of the lemons, I'd never stop laughing. If I looked at Mo, I'd die from laughing. I stared at the floor. I didn't want to leave this. I didn't want to leave my buddies. Well, Dave is in a bit of a predicament, isn't he? He wants to leave the HHB, but he doesn't want to leave his buddies. He wants to get his carving back. And if he gets his carving back, he has to leave. He can't come back. Well, we'll have to see in the next few chapters. Bye-bye.